Good morning, good morning, good morning. This is Reverend Sylvester Hampton, um, one man of God, unfiltered, coming to you once again. And I would like to say Happy Easter to you. Today is the 31st of March. Happy Easter 2024. And um, this is my Easter message for you. Uh, there's, uh, this holiday is has so much um, symbolism that's associated with it. And it's also the most misunderstood holiday. So I, I want to take this opportunity to, to try to dismantle a lot of questions that may arise and, and you may have in your, your mind, but you never knew what to ask. Okay. So I'm just, this is a, a tie up, a, a little bit of a lesson on Easter. Um, the Bible has always been a symbolic book. The reason why it was a symbolic book is because there are a lot of um, people that could not read and write during the time when the Bible started. And, and um, you had to be a person that understood Hebrew or Greek to understand the Bible. Um, and so if you couldn't, under, um, you didn't speak those languages, you didn't have a preacher that was that was able to converse it to you. So a lot of people uh, and, and plus it was against the law to translate the Bible into English or the language that you were because that was a sacred book and it was it was not looked upon um, um, positively to translate the, the original language that the Bible came in. The original language that the Bible was written in were two different languages. The Old Testament was written in um, Arabic or Hebrew. That was the original language. And also um, the New Testament was written in Greek. So unless you understood those things, um, did that language, then you, you weren't able to preach and teach it. It wasn't until um, during England time, um, during um, ancient or um, old England, where uh, they started translating the Bible into the, the everyday language of English, which was the King James Version. Now, King James didn't write the Bible. He just assembled theologians and people from all over the world to translate the Bible into English. As you know, there are certain words that are um, that couldn't be translated, so they tried to get it as, as close as possible to so that in English. That's the reason why most people that study the Bible also have a Greek translation with them to to further demonstrate what the word means. Okay, so most theologians go to school and 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 learn. Greek. That's part of the, the um, curriculum that you, you had to learn Greek um, or take Greek to um, so that you will be able to further understand what the Bible actually means. OK, um, let's talk about Easter. Easter was we can't talk Easter until we go right back to the, the Garden of Eden and why Easter was so important. Uh, Easter was important. Um, let's go back to the garden. As you know, God created Adam. And he, and he made Adam in the image of their image. So man was created in the image of God. And, and as we know, uh, the Bible started 3,000 years after man, the Egyptians were on the earth. So it started 3,000 years before, I mean, 3,000 years after man was, was we, we, saw, we are studying Greek, I mean, we're studying the Egypt, Egyptologists and they're digging up black people over in, in Egypt. Those pyramids and everything, those are all black folk, okay? So the Bible was written after they even was on the earth. So um, so the original people were black folk. Um, so you could properly say that Adam and Eve was black, okay, uh, or people of color. 
Uh, so I, I, I want that to, to, to sink in. So the people that we're talking about are people of color. Those were the original people of the face of this earth, and those are the people of the Bible. But as you know, the reason why they, whoever um, is in charge of the word and whoever the, the, um, or in charge of saying of the history, they're going to make the people their color or to see themselves, that people can see themselves in the Bible. So they can easily associate with it. So because black folk wasn't um, in charge of the word, naturally they were written out or whitewashed out of biblical history. Amen. So um, you can say that the original um, people in Jerusalem, the original Jews were black folk. And, and the people that we consider Jews now are the people that were, uh, th that are, have, let's say, confiscated or stole the identity of the original Jews. That's the reason why the mil um, that's the reason why Muslims say the so-called Jews. Okay, so um, we have to go back to uh, the fall of man to understand what this this whole thing of of, of uh, Easter is all about. When Adam and and Eve. Um, started messing around with the tree that, that God told him not to mess around with. Adam was given the instructions not to that for every tree in the forest you can freely eat, but the tree of the knowledge of good and evil you cannot eat. So leave that one alone. They don't say it's a, it was an apple. It, it don't address what kind of fruit it was. Okay, all they all we know is that it was a, a tree um, of uh, and the knowledge of good and evil, we don't know what the what fruit it was, but we do know that that whatever it was, it looked it, it was pleasing to the eye. Okay, now once they they violated that, they were take they were thrown out of paradise. Adam and Eve was thrown out of paradise, and the reason why God did that was because if he further if he um, allowed them to stay in paradise, they would have made it virtually impossible to come back. So they would have tarnished paradise, all messed up, all paradise up, and and it would be un, uh, unnoticeable, and you couldn't get back. So, so he had to get them out. Now, uh, this whole thing was, this whole... Every God's mission is because He gave the His promise that He was going to get hit these these peoples. Our, our He told our ancestors that He was going to get us back to the promised land and and back to uh, paradise. And so this whole thing that we're going through right now is to get us back to paradise. That that is my the theme that I had and to understand the whole thing. You got to go to my book. I wrote a book about this whole thing of people of God's bird's eye view. Um, get and and this book was about how to why things are the way they are and how to get us back to the paradise. Okay, now I, I'm getting there. I'm getting there about the Easter thing, um, but I have to to do a foundation so that you can understand where I'm coming from. Um, after the fall of man, God put um, took through Eve and Adam and Eve out of the garden. Uh, and so now what had happened was uh, Jesus and God was talking and saying, hey, look, um, Dad. Jesus said, hey, Dad, I, I don't know why in the world um, you give those guys the, the the everything they want, but I can't understand why in the world they would go back and 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 do the one thing that you told them not to. I, I don't understand that. So uh, why why do they do that? And so God and Jesus sitting over there conversing, and, and so God says, "Hey, look, I don't understand it either." So Jesus says, "Well, let me go down earth and 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 walk the face of the earth." Like they are. Now, don't forget that Jesus, God, Holy Spirit, all in one. 
Um, um, so Jesus, so God said, okay, let's get me, uh, let's get someone to, so you can be birthed and go through the, the, go through the birth just like man does so we can understand. So Mary, Jesus Christ's earthly, earthly vessel that Jesus came through, uh, she was just a young girl or an obedient girl. And and um, she was a virgin, never touched by a man, and um, and so an angel came to appear before her and said that hey look, you're going to become pregnant and and you the baby that you're carrying is belong to the high the the most high God, so you're going to be carrying God's uh, a, a God's baby, so it's coming from the Holy Spirit. It had to come that way because. Man was not, it was tarnished. But, um, so, um, Mary's obedience says, okay, so she became pregnant. At the, at, at, at the time, she was about to get, she was um, promised to Joseph, who was a man that was, an older man that was supposed to marry her. So, once Joseph and, and the community found out that, that she was pregnant, Naturally, that was a scandalous thing, and any girl that was pregnant and unmarried was 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 ridiculed and 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 was banished from the community, was looked down upon. Unfortunately, it, it, sh it we should have some of that going on now. We wouldn't have so many baby mamas that are pregnant and 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 thinking that it's a good thing to get pregnant and carry a baby without even the benefit of a marriage. And that's the way it was back in the day. So um, an angel had to go to Joseph and say, hey, look, you can marry this girl. She is she is still a virgin. She hadn't been violated. Um, the baby that she's carrying is God's baby. OK, so so marry her. So Joseph took upon himself because he was obedient and he was a righteous man. He married Mary so that so that the community would stop talking about her and everything. So he married her and made her legal, his legally his wife. So what happened was Jesus was born. And um and because Jesus was born, he was the walking, talking, he was the um the word wrapped in flesh. And many people have have said how how uh, different describing him different ways, but he was born, and and that's the reason why they call him the Son of Man because he was um, the he was the a son of a man. They call him the Son of Man. They also gave him the title of the Lamb, the the the, the Lamb of the Earth. He was the um, the Lamb of Man, which means uh, the sacrificial lamb. Back in the day, you had to sacrifice some uh, a lamb to the gods um, to to get blessed, to show your your honor to the gods, to get blessed. So you sacrifice a lamb, and he and whenever you sacrifice something, blood has to be shared or has to be given out. So Jesus was our sacrificial lamb, the lamb of man that was supposed to be sacrificed to so that we could um, have a, a path to heaven. OK, and people say that he had to pay for our sins with his blood. So that is the reason why he was a sacrificial lamb. He had to go through, walk the face of this earth, sinless. And when it came time, he had to sacrifice his life for us so that we can be redeemed or bought back. Bought, he paid for us, our souls and everything with his blood. He gave his life for us. And he had to go through a whole lot of stuff to do that. Um, every time when I, I think about what he, what he went through... Um, for us, for me, it, it, it's, it's touching and it's, and it's kind of, it's, it, it's mind boggling that he gave his life so that we will all be able to live and, 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 uh, 
and and we will be able to find our way through heaven. He bought he bought us back. He bought us with the price of his blood. Uh, that's when he went to the cross. Now, um, I, I digress. But um, here, here's Easter starts with with Good Friday. Good Friday is the date that Jesus, the day of the week that Jesus went to the cross and he was crucified. He was he was killed, crucified. Jesus came to the earth and suffered the worst punishment that we had um, um, back in the day. The worst punishment and put to be put to death was was being nailed to a cross and being nailed up there and hanging until you you suffocated or you died through your um, through the loss of blood. You will just die on the cross. That is the cruelest um, invention of death that and punishment that we had during that time. Um, so Jesus had to go through that. Also, Jesus knew that he had to sacrifice his life so that we can all be redeemed. Um, before he got, he captured uh, uh, while he was walking the face of the earth. He got with 12 guys, 12 guys, which were called his apostles, and and um, and they walked with him the journey. Now, I told you that the Old Testament was written in the uh, he, um, Aramaic or, or, or uh, Hebrew language, okay? And the difference between the Old Testament and the New Testament is that the Old Testament talked about the coming of a Messiah. Coming. He hadn't gotten here yet. He was just coming. The New Testament talks about his life as he was walking the face of the earth. That's the difference between the Old Testament and the New Testament. And, and the Old Testament talked about the coming of Christ. He hadn't gotten here yet. There's going to be someone that was coming. Now, most people back then, the most evil uh, um, entity of against Christians were the the Romans. The Roman Empire was was crucifying the the God's people all over the place. Anybody that believed in in God, the the God of Abraham were crucified and, and was mistreated. So they knew that they were going to have a rescuer, but, but in their mind, they thought that the rescuer coming to the face of the earth that was going to rescue them were going to come with a mighty army, going to be um, arriving on, on chariots and a white horse, and he was going to come with a mighty army and kill all those people that were against God's people. That's what they were thinking. They were thinking that way. So they were amazed that that uh, this this baby born in a manger, born in, in, in a in a animal shelter, was their savior. And and uh, and but the um, the wise men of of wise kings or whatever came and they looked at the north star which 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 showed that the birth of a of a messiah was at intimate and 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 it had happened and so they followed the north star and they came upon the birth of Jesus and they gave him um gifts and everything to for his mama and dad they gave him gifts that that they knew how sacred this baby was and so that was the birth of Jesus. But we celebrate that on the 25th of December, his birth. We know that he wasn't born that day, but that's what the, that's the, 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 the date that we all say, let's celebrate his birth. Okay. Um, so we're, Christmas was, was, was officially the day that he, we celebrate his birth. Um, and the reason why they say three wise men, it was basically because of the number of the types of gifts that was given out. 
um, to the baby. So they said there were three kinds of gifts. So there were three kinds. Of, so they, they said that each gift, since there were three kinds, there must have been three wise men. Okay. That, but there were more. There was no distinction of how many wise men there were. Um, um, so he walked the face of the earth for over 30 years. And he finally, uh, and by, through his journey from the age of 14, um, he was just a little boy traveling with his mama and daddy, his earthly mother and father. Um, Joseph uh, was his earthly father, which a father is supposed to teach the son a trade. And that is what a good father does with his son. And every father is supposed to teach his son a trade so that he can live on and live and make a good living with that trade. Joseph happened to be a carpenter. So he taught Jesus how to the, the carpentry of being a carpenter. Okay, so that's the reason why they, they uh, a lot of plays are saying the, the, comp, the, the carpenter. Because Jesus was a carpenter, that was a trade that his daddy, his earthly father, Joseph, taught him. Um... Um, I talked about okay. There's so much that I that I have to ground lay, lay everything to make sure that you that we can tie it all up, and and the reason why this uh, what the whole season is about, and I'll go into the symbolism also. The reason why I told you that the reason why the, um, the Bible was so full of symbols is because the people couldn't read. And they couldn't read the, the language. So when the preacher got up there to preach, he used um, um, picture picture slides to to show a, a photograph of something. And he taught he taught a biblical lesson from the photograph. So artwork was very very prevalent during that time because the people couldn't read. So he he put a picture up there to distinguish what uh, to show a a a lesson a biblical lesson. That's how they used to preach back in the day. Um, we have, okay, Jesus was born. He had uh, 12 apostles, 12 people that, that, that he walked the face of the earth with. And they were all, um, they were all able to, to, to witness his miracles that he performed while he was on the face of the earth. And they were convinced that he was the, the true Messiah and, and that he was the son of God. Um, so those, those 12 people that, that, that came. Now, there was a 13th person um, that, that came into the group. And, and, um, and, and uh, he was the one that turned him and Jesus in by, with a kiss. Uh, uh, he was the one that 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 um, the thirteenth, him being the thirteenth person. That's how we got the number thirteen as being bad luck. And and Friday is the uh, Friday the thirteenth was bad luck because it's, it's considered bad luck day because Friday was when Jesus was crucified. And the number thirteen was uh, um, was the, the the apostle that that turned against Jesus that turned him in. So thir Friday the thirteenth is is our bad luck day. That's how Friday the thirteenth was 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 born um, because the thirteenth apostle versus the thirteenth. I mean, uh, Friday the thirteenth was his death, the day of dies. Now another thing about Good Friday. Good Friday is, is we say it Good Friday um, because that was the day that he was crucified. He he gave up his his life on that day for all of us. Okay, he went to the cross. Um, before that, he says, "Hey, look, God, that I I don't want to have to go through this, but um, if I got to do it, it's your will, not mine. Um, I I, I got to drink from this cup. I got to become. I have to." He was considered a scapegoat. A scapegoat back then was back back then was a person that took the blame for everybody else. That's the reason why they call him a scapegoat. A scapegoat, you put the blame on some a goat and you let him go. 
you let him go and 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 leave the 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 um, village. You let him go out into the wilderness and hope he dies. But he's nowhere uh, in your village anymore. So when people look for sin and everything, it's out of your village. So you put all your sins and all your blames and all your dirt on that that goat and they and, and let him go. That's the reason I call him scapegoat. He was he escaped. You let him escape. Scapegoat, scape. That's the reason why we say, oh, he's a scapegoat. Um, you put the blame on that one goat and he's out of your midst. So Jesus was considered a scapegoat because he took all of the blame upon him that we have all our sins. He took them all and he went to the cross and he, he sacrificed his life. He became sin for us. A sinless man took on all the worldly sins and put them upon himself. And, he, and that was the very first time that he was out of touch with his daddy. He couldn't talk to his father anymore because his father don't talk to anything that has to do with sin. So he felt that was the first time ever that he became by himself. He was alone. He didn't know what it was like to be without the voice of his daddy. Okay. So he was, he, he, this man was sinless and, and, and sinless is important because when Adam and Eve was in the garden, Adam talked directly to God because he was sinless. He didn't have any sin upon him. That's the reason why he can converse with God by, just like we're talking. Now, another thing that, you, that we, we got to understand is that Lucifer was kicked out of, of, of heaven because he thought that he wanted to take uh, um, be on the right hand of God and he wanted to be a God himself and God didn't say, hey, look, you can't do that. And so, uh, and he was a singing angel. So he got kicked out. And when, when God kicked him out, he came to the, he fell on the earth and he tore the earth up. He tore, he was just like a child going to a bedroom and the child tears up the bedroom because he's angry that you send him to, to send him to time out and send him, go to your room and don't come out until I tell you to come out and they, they tear up the place. That's what he did to the earth. That's the reason why the earth was um, dark and formless. And God had to create it all over again. Now he was still on the face of the earth. So when Adam, God created Adam in their image and put him on the face on the earth, and he his job was to name all the animals and everything. Uh, uh, he he was there. Now it was God. It was God, Adam, Lucifer, and Eve. Those were the two, those were the four people that was on the earth. Lucifer did everything he can to, um, he's, to, to, to manipulate Eve's mind. And, and that was the start of the fall. Lucifer came in there and, and, and did everything he can to destroy or, or to prevent God's legacy from going on through man. So uh, he tempted man and made us, uh, or, or he, he manipulated us to, to, to violate God's one rule that he told us not to. Now, during the fall, back, back, to, back to Easter, during the fall and Jesus' crucifixion on, on the, the, the cross, he was crucified as our lamb. He was a lamb, he's got the title of lamb of man. The lamb of man was a sacrificial lamb that shed his blood so that we can we can go under his his purification. He bought us with his blood. So Jesus is, is the lamb of man. And he was the last sacrifice. No more sacrificing. Jesus was the last sacrifice and he's also given the title of the last pope. Because he was a, the intercessory between God and man. Back then, you needed uh, 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 the Levites were in a position to be a a a, a group of people that was um, 
a group of people that was uh, for they they were our intersection between God and man. So they 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 did they were between us. Now that Jesus did what he did and he went to the cross for us, there is no other. Um, he he's considered our last pope, our last person between God and and man. So we don't need a pope anymore. A pope is out of out of line. We don't need a pope, and we don't need anyone to 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 uh, to go to God in our behalf. Okay, um, so we don't need that anymore. So Jesus. Um, went to the cross for all of us and he died so we can go through Jesus name to God that's the reason why it's important to say in the name of Jesus uh, here's my prayer because you're going through Jesus name what Jesus did for us to his father all right um, now we did say that he was crucified on Good Friday which is a Friday most people are walking around here, and you still have people in the from the in the pulpit that are preaching that I don't know how in the world you get three days out of how can Friday be uh, 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 how can it be three days he rose on a Sunday morning and and he was died on Friday that ain't three days that's two days that just goes to show you that they don't know what the heck they're talking about I'm gonna show you how it's three days most you have some religions that backed it up. And said that he died on Thursday so that we can, we, he, he rose on Sunday. That's the three days. So they backed it up. And, and, which is wrong. The Bible means, it means what he says and says what it means. Okay. It was Friday and he rose on the third day. I'm going to tell you they had got the three days. For all you folk that are saying that how in the world can you get three days out of and there's only two days, I'm going to show you how. The day of the event, the day he died, Friday is day one. Day one is Friday, day two is Saturday, and early Sunday morning is day three. That's how you get three days. Please, don't you get up in the pulpit and make a, a, a spectacle of yourself and you don't know what, the, what you're talking about. I've seen so many TV evangelists that they got up there and, and made fools of themselves because they don't know what a word. All you got to do is study. The day of the event is day one. Amen. So, he went to the cross. He got crucified. He, he rose in the third day. And and because now you may say what the, why in the world you use a bunny? What does a bunny got to do with uh, 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 and a, a Easter egg got to do with Jesus? Well, I told you a long time ago. I told you that we use a lot of symbolism, and sure, those symbols have um, um, pagans use that too. But 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 the symbol of God. The reason why they use the egg and the bunny. And the and the bun and the rabbit is because that's the symbol. The rabbit is a symbol of futility. Futility is reproducing, um, turning out babies. Rabbits um, can reproduce. It only takes thirty one days for a pregnant a rabbit to be pregnant and 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 to have their babies. And when when they do have their babies, they, they their babies they have as many as anywhere from one to twelve babies. At a time, one to twelve babies at a time, and 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 within five days, within five days, that process they can get repregnant again in five days. So, the the symbol of futility reproducing, they use the bunny, the rabbit. That is the symbol of Easter reproducing. The egg came in because the egg is the symbol of Jesus' tomb. The tomb of Jesus. So the egg and, and fertility and, and Jesus coming back to life, resurrection, has to deal with life. Reproducing. Reproducing. Resurrection. Egg. Bunny. The rabbit. Okay. 
Um, so futility is reproducing, and that's how you get. And the, and the bunny, the rabbit, reproduce so many times over and over again, and it don't take. They reproduce all the time and over and over again, and it don't take a long time for you have a yard full of rabbits because they reproduce. All it takes, they they get pregnant, and it, and within thirty one days they have a child, the children, and. They can go from one to to twenty one different um, or twelve different um, children, twelve different. So uh, uh, and 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 five days later they can do the same process again. That's that's futility because that that is how it it it, it they 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 symbolize futility reproducing. The egg is the symbol of Jesus Christ's tomb. And the, 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 the resurrection is rebirthing. It has to do with rebirthing. How the, the rabbit rebirths all the time. And it, the springtime is the beginning of the season for a new season to come upon us. That's the reason why a lot of churches have spring revival. So that you can get new members into the, uh, into the church reviving them reviving people um springtime is a renewal renewing season um revival springtime renewing um um fertility rebirthing jesus christ egg all of those are symbols of 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 easter and if you you know and you now that you know what what the, now you know what the meaning of all the why you got an egg and what the Easter egg hunt and all that stuff, okay? And 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 because we are it's it's springtime and and you have to renew yourself and renew your feelings and renew your faith. It's a renewing process. That's the reason why you have our new clothes. We go to Easter, get our new Easter outfit to come to the church because we're new people. We're renewing our faith in God. So that's the reason why we buy new clothes to show that that we are a new creation, the new creature, reviving our, our, our faith in Christ, renewing. Everything has to do with renewing because the spring season is the new harvest season. It's the beginning of the new growth. Okay, all of those things have to do with the resurrection, has to do with the renewing, renewing your mind. All that stuff has to do with God and, and has to do with Jesus. That's how all this stuff ties in. Okay, so once we know what we know that we know, all of it makes sense. Okay, um, um, the symbol of renewing Jesus Christ coming out of the grave and he rose again. He came out of the grave early Sunday morning. He re he came and he and he he lived again. Now, you may say, and that's just the reason his his rebirth, his renewing, his he rose again on a Sunday morning. That's the reason why we started worshiping our Sunday, our our our, our church services we use sunday as our holy day we celebrate sunday as our holy day a day of rest which was during the new testament um god says that he created the world and 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 six days and in the seventh day he rested he rested on the seventh day which was saturday so the uh, the seventh day of Genesis celebrate their church day or their holy day on Saturday because that's what God said you rest on the seventh day and keep it holy we made Sunday our holy day because that was the day that Jesus Christ rose so there's really no difference between the the seventh day of Venice and and the Christian people making theirs on Sunday. We both are. It's just that the seventh day of Venice does it, did it from the Old Testament times. God said um, rested on the seventh day, and and we are using Sunday because Jesus Christ rose and and He died for all our sins and He was our Messiah and and we and we use His day of reasoning as our holy day. Okay. He has risen on Sunday. 
So that's the reason why we, we worship on Sunday versus Saturday. Now that you know that you know, all of it makes sense. That's all. It ain't complicated. God ain't complicated. He, he, he knows that he's talking to people who have pea brains. We're pea brains to compare to an infinite known God. He makes things simple for us. It ain't too difficult. We're making a mountain out of a molehill here. So I try to break it down to you to make sure that you know that you know that you know and, and see how simple he really, how, how simple God has made it for us all. Okay, uh, I think I hope and pray that I, I've covered all the the symbolism of Easter. I hope that that now that you you know that you know that you know. I hope that I tied up as much loose ends as I can, so now it makes sense to you. Um, I, I pray that uh, the lesson that the Holy Spirit gave to me, I gave it to you properly and and made it and and made it simple for you to understand. I try to break it down to you as simple as I can. Because I'm a simple man. I ain't all that smart. So I try to break it down. It's, it's so that even I can understand what this whole thing's about. I want you to know that I love you. And there's nothing you can do about it. I want you to know that um, that um, I'm still continuing the, um, in the battlefield. I'm your ultimate soldier battling against the family, the souls of the family. Fighting for the souls of the family. And, and men, you are... The leaders that God left in charge, he gave you, you all dominion, and we are the protectors and the, the teachers of our families. We are our families covering. Families consist of wife and children. And I'm talking to only people that are remnants of this earth, not of the world, but in the world, but not of the world. People that are members of the club only. People that are saved and accept Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior. Those people, the people that are going through this narrow gate, not it's not a highway to heaven, it's a narrow gate. Those are the people that I'm talking to. Okay? I gotta keep reminding you that because I don't want the heathens to think that they can they can substitute and that the problem is they think that they can substitute what I'm saying to them. But you but, but for my my stuff to work for you, you gotta become a part of the club, the remnants. The people who are who are, are not looked um, favorable upon, okay. Uh, I want you to know that I love you. Also, also, could you please? I want to remind you to subscribe. Subscribe to the channel. There are many of you you're looking. I need for you to subscribe. Push the subscription button. It's not going to cost you anything. Subscription button, the thumbs up button. And, and also the notification button so that you will get any information or anything that I have that's coming out new, you will, you will get it, you'll receive it. Also, get three people and share the channel with somebody. Share it, share it. Get a, share it with them and say that, hey, look, this guy that I talked to that, that, that's on the internet, what do you think? And y'all have some conversation, okay? Um, just share it. Don't keep it to yourself. Don't be the blacks, uh, the Dead Sea, keeping it to yourself. Share it. Share your information. Share good news. Share the good news. All right? This is Reverend Sylvester Hampton, one man of God unfiltered. Until the next time, you have a good one. I love you. Bye-bye.